What does this acrylic tube have to do with my reef? You're about to see. I picked up some new clownfish. These are orange skunk clownfish from Sustainable Aquatics. They've been in the Peacemaker now for about a week. That way all the other fish could get to know them and hopefully not think they're dinner. I decided I wanted to get them in that anemone down there, but I was concerned that something might happen and might go wrong. A friend told me about a system using a tube where you could pour the clownfish down in, and I thought, I gotta try this myself. So the first thing I had to do was go ahead and get my pitcher up there on top of the tank, move the peacemaker back a little bit to make sure that I have room to work, have a net, a towel, and of course the acrylic tube. I stopped all the flow in the tank to limit any strange activity happening in the reef. I really wanted to make sure these clownfish made it into that sea bay anemone that's just down below next to that white coral. That was a bird's nest that went up in smoke within 48 hours flat and since then has been removed from the reef. The lid was taken off the top of the peacemaker that keeps the fish inside. I've got everything ready. Let's do this. Now this is kind of a juggling act if you're working by yourself because you have to hold the tube in place but not hit the anemone because you don't want the anemone closing up. You need to be able to scoop out a fish with a net from the peacemaker and get it into the tube without having it miss. I also was concerned that the clownfish isn't really getting used to the anemone because I'm pretty much throwing it right into one rather than letting it go down there and taste it. He's my guinea clown. I didn't want to throw many of them in there. I wanted to see what would happen with one first. To help encourage that clownfish to make it down the rest of that tube, I'm going to pour some water down the tube with a pitcher of salt water, just to give it a little push. See what happens. Touchdown! Actually, it was kind of a nerve-wracking moment there for about 90 seconds because there was zero activity on the part of the clownfish. But after about a minute and a half, it started swimming around in the anemone, and I decided the anemone was not going to eat it, and the clownfish was going to live. It was time to add his brothers and sisters. I guess I should say brothers, since we don't know which one's a female at this point. So in we go, one by one. And as you can see, it's so much easier getting them in there after the first one's in place. I don't know if they watch each other and figure it out, if they see one down low and figure it out, if they finally see an anemone and figure it out, but it was no big deal getting them down there. This entire process probably took me five, six minutes to get all the clownfish down into their anemone. I'm just glad I was able to film this for you guys so you could see it for yourselves because just a few pictures taken with a camera, there's no way to prove it, but you can actually watch it happening live. It's important that you go ahead and make sure all the flow is off so they will go exactly where you need them to go. If things are moving around, it's going to be tough. I think we're about five or six clownfish in. I purchased a total of 11 of these little guys. Why 11? Because I wanted a nice group in this anemone. I started off with only three, but my friend told me, get more. Three is not enough. If you have three, two will pair up and the third one will be chased away or hurt. So I thought, let me get a bigger group. 
and they were on sale for $5 each, and how could I not say give me 11? I gotta thank my big fish for not getting in the way of this and not causing interference or chaos. The wrasses didn't try to eat these clownfish. The tangs didn't seem to even spoil the shot. All the little guys went down into their new anemone. New to them, I've had the anemone now for some time. And I was looking for something that would be a nice harem that would live together in a group. And this is a good shoaling fish. Last little guy to go into the tube and into his new home deep within the 400 gallon reef. Meow. All right, let's look closely and see if we can see 11 clownfish. I see one or two. <laughs> They're all in there. The peacemaker will be taken out, cleaned up, set aside until next time. I use this for any new fish arrival. And it's time to turn on the return pump. And all of the Vortec pumps. These little guys have no issues with the flow whatsoever. They stay near the anemone at all times. I see them branching a little bit into that pagoda cup to the left and maybe above to the frog spawn above it. But overall, the anemone is definitely their home and their safety zone. And I have been watching them daily for the last couple of weeks before I release this video because I didn't want to tell you one thing and then something else happened. They are doing totally fine and I still count 11 every single day. So, yes, you could try this with your own clownfish if you're trying to get one into an anemone. This method may work for you. Just be gentle and take your time and maybe you'll get lucky and it'll work out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Another video comes out next week.